shoot. Where are my glasses? Hello. I don't think anybody's on yet. There's Kristen. Let's see here. Look at her. Hello. Hello. I like to... always test like, I do too. what I look like, but like not on Instagram, like with my camera. And yeah. I'm like, wait, it's different. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I'm just looking at the different. I feel like every time I do a live, they add new things. Yeah. <laughs> like Why something. wouldn't they? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing really good. How are you? Doing okay. Today was one of those like days, like those like, you know. I know. Just got to get through this time of year. This like, week has been very interesting because yeah. obviously the kids are home. Yeah. And it seems like I, I, my husband's actually off from work this week. And I was like, this, this time we're going to do stuff. Yeah. We're not going to just do stuff around the house. We're going to like go out and do stuff. Well, every day no. it's been something. I know. I know. <laughs> Which I appreciate. I mean, we're going to catch up on a lot of stuff, but it'll, it's, it, it's, it's that it's weird weird time of the year when you feel yeah. like you should just be in bed all day <laughs> totally. Totally. totally uh well i'm so excited to have you on i mean you know i love you and i'm a big fan of yours um and i'm a huge fan of yours uh, thank you um my i was scolded last time because we went so long that Oops. we like we like to put these uh, we put them on youtube and then we're eventually gonna make hopefully make a podcast out of them yeah. um my sister's watching and she's probably like, oh my God, stop talking to because <laughs> she's the one that does all of that. But, um, so we're going to aim for about a half an hour. Obviously Perfect. we can always do this again. Um, yeah. but I would love, I have, I took, I did notes this time. I feel like a pro professional, like interviewer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hi Emily. Um, so I would love for you just to get started. Um, first tell us about you. Like, who are you? Um, and then tell us about um, what, like, what do you do, like, in terms of what is an empowerment coach? Because I feel like that's a very kind of new term that a lot of people haven't heard. But first, who's Kristen? Sure. Okay. Who am I? So I am uh, a mom of four kids. I feel like moms always say that first. And I, I don't know if that's something <laughs> I like. Am, am willing to, to switch around quite yeah. yet, but I do feel like it defines a lot of who I am because, you yeah. know, kids, especially under a certain age, take up yep. a lot of our mental space and emotional space. So yep. I, I feel like I'm a mom first uh, of four kids ranging in ages from um, almost 15 down to eight. So it's a bit of a crazy household. And um, I am a wife. I've been married for 16 years now, 16 years which feels like a blink, but also like really long time. <laughs> well, four kids spaced out over that time. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. And um, so career-wise, I was a teacher a little bit of the time. So I kind of, just to cap it really quick, I went to school to be a teacher because I wanted to do something that meant something that was important. I was in corporate America for a couple of years and I was like, this is killing me. And these people that I'm working with don't seem very happy or people that I want to like yeah. surround myself by. What can I do that would be, I knew I was going to have kids, a good mom job that also felt like it was giving back to the world in some way. So I decided to go back to school to become a teacher. I taught all of two years before I started having multiple babies and I took eight years off went back into the classroom um probably about the COVID time warp really does me in but uh, uh, maybe four or five years ago I went back into the classroom mm -hmm. and uh, quickly realized that as much as I enjoyed certain aspects of it it something else was calling to me and I was getting whispers of like this isn't what you're supposed to do with your life. And if this is all you ever do, you will be disappointed. Yeah. And that's not to say that I don't think teaching is a rewarding career or that there are people who are made to do that or, or felt passionate about it. But there was just something about it that was missing. I, I, I very much understand. As you know, I taught also. And teaching was my entire world and personality yeah. and until it wasn't. Right? right, right. And so you can you can love both. You can change. So... You know, I, I very much hear everything you're saying. Totally. And you know what? It's interesting because I think when I went into teaching, 
I was like, you know, 20 something, mm -hmm. uh, had a different lens of the world. And then when I went back, I was like a completely different human. And just the things that jazzed me up about being a teacher when I went back the second time were the things that I'm doing now, which is right. really empowering people, uh, making human connections, showing, uh, li really holding a mirror up to people and showing them the best of themselves. So uh, I love the story of a child that I worked with that I connected with that w was very shy, like didn't love coming to school. And she was young, she was uh, in early grade school. And the connection that I made with her uh, it didn't have anything to do with academics, but she became happy to come to school. And I literally just held up a mirror to her to say, like, you have something special inside of you, which I believe is true about everybody. And so I really realized through teaching that there was something bigger that I was meant to do. And um, I better just hurry up and do it because <laughs> the one thing we're not promised is, to, you know, time so I decided you know I think COVID really for me was like sort of the awakening to realizing that like if I don't start to do some of the stuff that I'm dreaming about now when will I do it and I didn't want to you know I listened to a podcast recently about like uh, somebody that worked with people who were dying and uh, she wrote a book about it and one of the things she said is that um, you know people regret not doing the things that they know they get that little whisper that nudge like oh i'd really love to do that and i think that that happens to a lot of us that we let sort of life get in the way or we let our old familiar patterns like kind of wheelbarrow us into like the next thing yeah of... and i will add too like well first of all from a personal level i have seen you grow so kristen and i were in um um like a mastermind class together in the beginning of COVID. And uh, you have cut like your, I feel like your coaching business has like just thrived like exponentially. In the last it's year. really interesting because when I first started, I, I like knew what I wanted to do. And when you just said about um, empowerment coaching, I couldn't really in the beginning put words to like what I wanted to do for people or what I wanted to do with people. And I, um, was doing all kinds of reading and research and and I read something that was like that's it that's what I mean when I say yeah. what I want to do and I was very um uh what's the word I want to use I was very like trepidatious about telling people about what I was mm -hmm. doing because yeah. I was like what are they gonna think and like do I really have the um capacity to do this and am I gonna be good at it and I really feel like what this year has done for me is I've really stepped into just owning it and saying, you know, this is what I do and this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm passionate about. And people um, respond to that. I think when you step in confidently toward what you want to do, um, you'll feel people's uh, reactions to you change because in the beginning I was like, you know, fumbling over my words yeah. and saying, I, I don't even know what I do. I don't know what that is. So. Well, and I think that that brings me to the point I was going to make about you. And then you can give us a little brief synopsis about what an empowerment coach does before we move on. But, you know, um, I think that a lot of people ignore those whispers because they don't have somebody that trusts them. Right. So I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a therapist that's really spiritual. I have you, I have Jen Shakespeare. I have all these people, right. That my Meg, obviously in my circle that I can say, Hey, I have this crazy idea to start a television show or change the world. And you guys are like, cool. Yeah. Okay. Like what's, what's for dinner? Like, you know, and it's very normal in, in our circle, but a lot yeah. of people don't have that. And I think that um, maybe if you could talk a little bit about then how, how do you work with people as an empowerment coach? And I've seen you, kind of work with people just generally in group settings and you have such an amazing I mean your personality and your smile and your you are a light you truly are like a light and um so I, if you could talk about how first of all who is your your art like who are your normal um there's Jen Shakespeare I just said your name Hi, Jen. Um, if, if you, who is your normal client like normal yeah. I mean who comes yeah. to you and sure. and just really really briefly like how do you work with them and what does it mean to be an empowerment coach Sure, absolutely. So typically I work with women, although I'm open to whoever 
feels like would be a good match yep. for, for the work that I do. But typically I work with women and, and typically the women I work with are similar in age to me, although I have also worked with younger people and I, I love working with younger people too, because I feel like a piece of it is like seeing us when we, like, I always mm. wish like, why wasn't this a why did why weren't my eyes open right. to this being around when I was younger? So um, that excites me too. But really, just people who feel like there's a little bit more out there that maybe that just feel like life should be just a little bit more beautiful than this, or mm. life should feel more exciting than black this. black and, and white to Technicolor. Like there's yeah. a, there's something missing there. Yeah, and like not um, fall, you know, I think all of us fall into, and there's nothing wrong with this because it's how we're built as humans, fall into these like old patterns or like fall into these narratives that we don't even recognize after a while because they just become so, we come, become so accustomed to them that we don't even see it for ourselves. Like that thing that we say, um, I was also listening to another podcast today, I do that a lot, that was talking about like the way we speak to ourselves, right? And, and this is not just to say like, to look in the mirror and say like, you look beautiful, yeah. I love the way your eyes look. It's not always physical appearance. It's also like, what are we saying about the way that we feel? Are we like owning our feelings in terms of saying like, right. I'm depressed or I'm right. tired? Well, you're not, you're not any of those things. You're right. Olivia, you might right. feel tired. Right. And, and that's perfectly fine. And if your body is tired, that your body is telling you to do something about that mm -hmm. and like take care, slow down. But right. that's not who you are as a human. Right. So to right. really kind of peel back those layers and see what are the narratives that you're telling yeah. yourself and how are they holding you back? And how are those like limiting beliefs holding you back from really living up to your potential that's going not, and I, I don't mean potential in the sense that like, you are capable of these things that other people think you should be doing. Right. But like, I'm talking about the, your innate potential that like would feel really great to you. Because right. I think a lot of us, like we hold ourselves back because either we think we're not worthy or we think we're not um, capable or we think we're not deserving or we think like, who am I to do that thing? Yeah. So I really partner with people to show them um, that they're capable, that they're worthy and that you know, if there are things that are holding them back, I just point those things out to people. Mm. Um, and it's a discovering together. It's not right. like I say, well, I see right. that you're doing this and that's right. holding you back. I really like, um, it, I, I've called myself a hype girl before, yeah. right? Like, I, I love to like, I want to show people like, yeah. what I see in them. Right. Um, and I do believe that when you see something in somebody else, it's because it exists inside of you. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't recognize it. So if you see somebody that's like, living this life that you think is amazing, and you're like, I wish I could be more like so and so, it means you're already like so and so you just mm -hmm. need to kind of uncover some of the things that have held you in your patterns and kind of break free from some of those things. I love that. And I was just reading Brene Brown's book, Atlas of the Heart. I'm just a few little bit into it. And she talks a lot about language, obviously, that's her bit, one of her big things. And how sometimes we don't even know the language we should be using to describe the emotions and the feelings we have. And once we learn that language, working with a coach like yourself, it literally opens up a whole new world of emotions for us because we can access those things in a totally different way. Totally. And I think it's also like an examining of like what is happening instead of just letting circumstances control you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when the tree fell into my roof, I, obviously some of these people are your followers, but I had a um, tree fall into my roof last, a couple of weeks ago, I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was terrifying. And I felt my body go into a panic attack. And mm -hmm. because of the work that I've been doing, I was able to name what was happening to my body. I was able mm -hmm. to name what was happening to my emotions. And I was able to calm myself down from yeah. spiraling into like a, yeah. um, into a ball of mush that wouldn't be able to help anybody because I right. was been panicking. So I like am able to be an observer of my own behaviors and actions and say like, how am I handling this? Like, is this 
you know, cause for alarm? Or can I talk myself through this right. and say, you know, I put my hands on my heart. I took a deep breath. I right. like focused on my breathing and I said, everybody's safe. We're okay. Right. Everyone's right. safe. But there was a time where that would have sent me into a spiral yeah. that I wouldn't have been any help to anyone, right. especially my four kids that were also, right. you know, nervous and scared. Right. And right. they take their, they take their direction from us. You right. know? So totally. So that being said, we are all ending this year and kind of this weird place. Um, how can you, as what would you, if, if we were all your clients, <laughs> what would you give us a couple tips about um, moving into this next now phase? I'm going to say phase, right? Like, cause it's not yeah. a, a new year is a date, right? So like for a lot of people, a year, maybe a year since they ended chemo or since they got divorced, right? So that's just a date. But as we move from December 31st to January 1st, what are some ways that we can feel confident and empowered that have zero to do with our physical body and right. that we can actually, there are some actionable tips that you would give us to waking up on January 1st feeling strong. Absolutely, absolutely. So the first thing that I think is super important and the thing that I've been working with my clients on the past couple of weeks is to kind of take inventory of the past year and what your accomplishments have been. And I um, have to give a lot of examples when I'm doing this because I know one of my clients was like, I thought of one thing and then I couldn't think of anything else until you started to list some of your accomplishments. And then I said, oh, wait, I can say that too. Right. And so, you know, one of the accomplishments that I um, listed when I did this exercise for myself was that I invested in myself. I invested in myself in coaching programs and I invested in like personal development things. So that's to me is an accomplishment. So when I talk about reflecting on your accomplishments, it's not just the things that you think would look good on paper or be impressive to somebody else. It may just be like, I got out of bed most days and, you know, brush my teeth. That could be an accomplishment. Well, it's an accomplishment because you felt you were worthy enough of that. Right? Absolutely. Whether it's investing the financial or investing the sleep, the time, whatever your investment is in yourself. It could be taking five extra minutes to do makeup every day. Whatever it is, you took the time to know you were worthy, which is a problem a lot of people have. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I would take an inventory of your wins and accomplishments in 2021. Uh, and when you're doing that, be really com um, compassionate to yourself. You know, like this isn't the time to say like, oh, I wish I had done this or I wish I had done this differently. Um, that can help with thinking about things that you might want to do differently moving forward, um, but not in the sense that you're down on yourself or saying like, can I ever get this right? Because that really just doesn't, serve anybody but it be, to... could you could you add in like things that made you feel good like emotionally absolutely absolutely so any kind of um accomplishment or win that wouldn't necessarily fit the definition right. but that feels good to you um so spending some time on reflection mm -hmm. then i would say um to kind of take inventory on what things filled your year that you are, are excess baggage that you could get rid of. So like mm -hmm. what things are existing in your world that you need to consider ditching? Now, does that mean you're going to wake up on January 1st and like magically just get rid of all the toxic bullshit? Probably not. I mean, <laughs> that would be great, but it's, it's a process, right? <laughs> but starting to kind of think about like, what are the things that are holding me back? Um, you know, if it's the job, you're probably not going to walk in on January 1 and right. quit your job. Because <laughs> no. That would probably create a lot more conflict in your right. life. Right. But you can start to think about, okay, I know deep in my intuition that my job is not serving me and I want to have an exit strategy. So maybe it's as, as small as just the thought that, okay, I'm going to start to think about what I can call in and what can be new for me because I know this is holding me back from my best self. Um, so look at the things that are in your life that are holding you back or and see what things you can ditch, right? Maybe it's, uh, you know, mm. 
email like maybe you're answering your emails too much now let me explain that really quickly right like no one's getting an award for being the best email responder so if you're spending a ton <laughs> I, mean, of time, I need that lesson Kristen. yeah <laughs> like if you're spending a ton of time like hours and hours just responding to emails that aren't really moving you forward like that might be a thing to consider like right. scaling back on or scheduling time in your week that that designated time right. is for but yeah. not letting it rule or like gossiping with friends it's like something that's like emotionally bringing you down you know even like i know a lot of women i know right now are, are getting off the dating apps they're like it's too much like it's like it's exhausting you yeah. know so little things like that totally totally yeah. so see what you can kind of evaluate and say you know what i think in 2022 this isn't serving me i'm gonna consider a plan to get rid of some of this stuff that's holding me back I wrote some notes down too. Um, and I think when you do that, you'll realize that there's a whole community out there for you that you can start to build. So one of the things mm -hmm. you said when we first got on is that like, we have this amazing circle of people that we've we built that like, are like minded that yeah. like, celebrate the same kinds of things that we celebrate. We're not all exactly the same. And as a matter of fact, we come <laughs> no. from all different situations and walks of life. No. But we, um, really are like-minded where it counts. So um, when you start to ditch some of the things that aren't serving you anymore, you really can cultivate and start to build the community that will help nurture you with wherever you're headed. Uh, I never really got this either. I always mm -hmm. heard like, you're the five people you surround yourself with. And I'm like, how do you like intentionally do that? But you will find when you start to to ditch some of the things that are holding you back, you will find communities of people. And you have to put yourself out there a little bit, which is sometimes mm -hmm. scary, get out of your comfort zone and say, these are some things that I'm really interested in. Right. And who else can I find that's also interested in these same things? And sometimes that might be a community of people that are ditching the same things you're ditching. Um, yeah. You know, it, 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 it depends on, on what your, um, interests are but i really think that building community and finding support in whatever ways you can is like yeah. essential yeah i agree i agree essential yeah uh let's see what else did i have um allow yourself to dream big so i think uh a lot of the things we tend to a lot of us tend to play small and safe mm -hmm. I and say like, i can't i can't dream it's that big like that's yeah. not not reasonable i have to keep it you know sort of <laughs> right right in a in, in you know within reach mm -hmm. um, but how i would i would urge everybody to ask yourself this question how happy are you willing to be mm -hmm. which is sort of like an, an opposite question than what you're usually asked but like you if you have a thought or an idea or a little nudge or a little inkling that you might love something and it might be calling in a partner it might be a, a job or a career path right. or it might be an extracurricular activity right like we think about that stuff for our kids all the time like what would mm. what would our child be like really interested in and have a lot of fun right. doing uh, but we forget to do that when we're adults right True. so like something that i'm calling in for 2022 is like i i love to sing and mm. i think i'm a really good singer <laughs> i don't know what my kids would say but I'm going to look into like ways, like what that means yeah. to me. Like, how can I sing more? Can I take yeah. singing lessons? Can I, and I think when you start to, to dream big, a little yeah. bit out of your comfort zone, that's where the magic is. And that's where you can say like, I'm not going to play it small. I'm going to dream really big. And then I'm going to see what steps I can take to get there. Not like a, right. it's just going to happen. It's, you know, taking one next step after the after the next two. well i think this goes back to what we were saying it all goes back to feeling like you're worth it right all of Absolutely. it and so i think there's a lot of people myself included that have this limiting belief of well why do i deserve that right why am i why do i deserve to be this happy why do i deserve to have everything i want but why not right like why not but i think you know working going back to working with somebody like you you're the one that's going to rip that band-aid off and go no you are allowed to have right that. And, oh. and because, and because, let me tell you one of the main reasons why in, in that particular comment in like, who am I to, and is that when we 
are able to step into our greatness and step into living in alignment to what our dreams are. It gives other people permission to do the same. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the people that are doing this kind of work or having these types of conversations are people that want to bring others with them. So mm -hmm. it's not a matter that. of like, I'm going to do it and it's just going to be all mine. It's I'm going to do this so I can show all these other women that it's possible and yeah. they can do it too. And I think that that's, you know, huge in sort of grappling with that worthiness piece, because it's not like why you and not somebody else, right. it's you and all those other people. Oh, I love that. I love that. I, that gives me chills when you say that. I mean, I, I had a lot of that when I was thinking about starting Fresh Starts. And I was like, I, you know, it was the pandemic and I was homeschooling and I had a whole other business. And my therapist said to me, you're worried about starting a business that's going to help people. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're literally, all you want to do in life is to accomplish, to get to the like Oprah level, to literally help people. Why is that a bad thing? Right, like, right, right. And I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> you're right. It's not about me. And that wasn't ever my intention to make it about me. But right. sometimes we get so stuck in our... Um, you know, we let the other, the other voice speak, right? Instead of Absolutely. the, like, I try to say, why not me? Or why can't, you know, or, or I get it all, right? Instead of like, well, I'm not, you know, worthy of all of that. Absolutely. And I do believe that we wouldn't have an idea if it wasn't possible somewhere mm. in the realm of possible. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. And that, and that feels like awesome when you think about it in that way to think like, yeah. oh, I if, if I thought it, it means it can happen. And if you think about any like inventor or, um, you know, successful person, they had to have the idea first and it right. started as an idea right. and then it grew into whatever it becomes. So, right. and I think we're living in this hyper age, right? So everything is like, get a URL and get social media, get, but really businesses and human to human relationships take time. Absolutely. Right, and so that's that. You we have to learn to be Meg, Meg who just signed out. Meg and I were just texting about this. I'm so bad at being patient, right? So it's yeah. like we get so frazzled. And we're like, why is this not a multi million dollar helping a million people thing, you know? And so it's we have to learn to like slow down, which is Absolutely. I think hard for a lot of us to do. Well, that's like all trust and surrender, right? Like right. not really like looking at a destination right. and just saying, okay, I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna do this first start registry. And I'm going to make it none of my business when it's going to happen. It's just a matter of like it happening at yeah. some point, whenever that is, and just keep moving forward, which isn't easy to do. I mean, that's where the work lies. Well, that's right? an exit. Like, One foot in front of the other, right? Baby steps. It's baby steps. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So okay, like not one. necessarily going to the end of the journey. Right. Well, we're, we're so focused on the, like the, right, the, the end point that we forget that there's like a beautiful road. Yeah. In front of us. Yeah. Yeah. Give us one more tip. And then I want to talk about two other things with you before you go. Okay, sure. Um, start with a small daily promise to yourself. So mm -hmm. like, just pick one thing that's really small, like drinking a glass of water first thing when you wake up in the morning. One thing, just pick one thing and start that there and do that one thing for 30 days. Because for one, of, for one of two reasons, not just because that thing that you pick is good right. for you, probably, you're probably going to pick something good for you, but also because you build trust in yourself, which mm. all of this work is about. All of this work is yep. about learning to trust in yourself. So if you set a promise to yourself that you keep day after day, you can build from there. So just start with one thing. Like, it doesn't have to be this You're making your bed. It could be... Right. Taking a walk, it could be, you know, cooking dinner for yourself, or it could be like some flossing, right? Something yeah. super, super simple and stupid that, yeah. And celebrate it. So right. do set, set yourself up for success to do it and then celebrate it, even if it's this tiny little accomplishment, because those mm -hmm. tiny little accomplishments are what build into the, the great big thing. Well, and that's what, uh, what we believe a fresh starts too with the, with the product recommendations, right? Like I always tell people it's the toothbrush holder. When you change your toothbrush holder, your entire life is going to change because you're, you're looking at it. It's a, it's a whole new world, right? Yeah. And uh, so it's what you're saying is exactly the same thing, but with a mindset. Yep. Like those tiny little things. I love that. So um, tell us about your podcast because I've been on it and I love it. I'm a huge fan of your podcast. And if you listen to 
the warrior within us, there is actually a, a special coupon code for Fresh Starts uh, memberships. So tell us a little bit about um, how it came to be and how people can listen to it. Sure. So it's called The Warrior Within Us. And the name is really significant because my maiden name is Guerrero, which translates from Italian into warrior. So I had had um, somebody in my family, my aunt had stage four pancreatic cancer. I decided um, I'd always wanted a warrior tattoo because I said, oh, it's my last name. It's really mm -hmm. meaningful. So oh. she got diagnosed with cancer. I got the warrior tattoo. And then I started to think about, I thought for years about having a podcast and it, it all just kind of like came to me. Like, this is what the podcast is going to be called. And it's really, uh, the podcast is talking to regular real people about their warrior stories, because I believe everybody has one. And I think when we tell our stories and we're really authentic and vulnerable, we, that's how we connect. And I think yeah. that especially in the past couple of years, we've learned how critical it is to connect with other people. And I think it's the antidote to most of our issues and the world's problems is if we could just see each other a little bit more for who we are and love each other a little bit more, like we would just all benefit so much. So that's primarily. I, I, I love your podcast and you do have, and it's amazing, like you say, regular people, but like they have such amazing stories. I mean, like, and, and they run the gamut of like, from business stuff to personal trauma to celebrate, I mean, and, and you do celebrate everybody so beautifully. So, um, and it's on all the places you could get podcasts. Correct. So yep. When and we will put all of this well, in every Thursday, yeah. new episodes. Come okay, out. Thursday. So we uh, will put this IG live. Well, we'll share it on Instagram, but eventually we do put them on in a blog post uh, with a YouTube link, so people can watch this again, and then we'll have all the links there too. Awesome. Um, awesome. And then. I know you are sober curious. What is the phrase that you like to use? Yeah, so I'm alcohol free. I started um, that journey at January 1st of 2020. And it was really the catalyst for all of the other changes that came in my life. Like, I guess that was my small daily promise to myself that I started with. Um, that sort of just had a domino effect to everything else that, that came into my life. So I am going to be launching a um, 12 week group coaching program with that at the premise, but uh, not necessarily to say like, you're going to give up alcohol forever. Yeah. Um, that word is really tricky, but really just to kind of look around and think about something in your life that could be holding you back from really being your true authentic, like most best self. Uh, so it's a 12 week program. We're going to have group experts, um, calls once a week. Um, and really all of this work that I've been talking about will all be incorporated in uh, just taking a look at something that could be holding you back. That's amazing. I love that. So before we go, um, coming from the fresh start background, how would somebody going through a fresh start, whether it's divorce, breakup, moving, job, how would they work with you in terms of like, literally like getting in touch with you? Do you work virtually with people? Uh, like, obviously, like, what does it look like to work with you? Yeah, so um, I do one on one coaching as well. And um, it's all through zoom. So it's like really easy and it's accessible to anybody. So um, definitely reach out to me, uh, send me a DM and um, I would love to work with you on wherever, wherever you are in your life and wherever you're headed. So definitely reach out. No, and I can tell everybody from just knowing Kristen and talking to Kristen and multiple projects with Kristen that she truly is, I mean, like an angel. She is just, you know, she is a shining light and it vibrates at a very high level. So um, oh, it is a you. pleasure to know you. And also tell us before you go, what is, do you have a word for the new year? Or yes, a, I do. Okay. I do. So my word for this year, so my word for last year was present presence but I didn't even pick the word like at the beginning of the year I just thought of it the other day when I was like that's what this year has been mm -hmm. so I, I was a little late to the party I guess <laughs> but uh, my uh, word for this year is going to be um magnetized so I'm Ooh. all about like just calling in all good energy and you know magnetizing the best of everything for the new year I love it if anybody can do it it's you so thank you so much Kristen we will share this. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, and I will make sure that when we share it, you can reach Kristen and work with her. And we will definitely share more information about her group coaching. And we'll share her Fresh Starts link so you can click and get in touch with her right away. Thank you, Kristen. And I'm going to use those tips to start the new year. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks.